In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a safety net for your ad spend with Facebook. Because sometimes as you manage multiple campaigns and possibly multiple ad accounts, it's easy to lose track on what you're spending on and that this has led to quite some cases where people spend more than they intended or with an unchecked spending, they max out their credit cards. So this will be fantastic for you to set some kind of security in place. And the other reason would be just in case of a minuscule chance that your ad account had got hacked, this will be the maximum that you would so-called lose, okay? So what you're looking at right now is the payment settings. And as you can see that this account, we have set up the account spending limit. But let's just rewind back a little bit on how we arrive at a page like this. So what you want to do is that when you log into your business account for Facebook, you want to go to the top left menu and head down to billing. So this is the page where Facebook will send you all the invoices for every time you do an ad spend or a billing, but we're not going to stop here. So what you want to do is you want to go to the top right and click on payment settings. and we'll arrive at this familiar page. Now, by default, if your account is brand new, you're gonna see that there's no account spending limit and that's exactly what we're gonna do, okay? So what you wanna do is you're gonna click on change and we can put in any amount that you want. So this account's currency is in US dollars and currently this is set to 300 USD and I'll click on update limit. So what happens is that after an ad spend of 300 US dollars, the account will stop spending and for me to continue spending i would either a click on the reset button which is what i should be doing anyway all right i'll click on reset and i'm going to confirm that and this allows me to continue spending with the ad account again or i can also click on change and increase it to a higher limit let's say 500 us dollars so this is totally up to you there's no so-called magic number but as a rule of thumb, you don't want to put such a low amount such as like $10 or $20. Otherwise, you want to keep coming back here and reset the ad spend at $5 to $10 or $20 for the matter. So you want to set up something a little bit higher, like a few hundred dollars for beginners. And if you're spending a lot by the day, then obviously you want to increase your ad account spending limit. So that's really all there is to it. And if you want to remove this limit for whatever the reason, you can click on remove. And... We're back to the default. So with that said, I'm just gonna change this back to $300 because that was the intended spending limit for this account. And there we go. We have just set up a security net in place for your ad spend with your credit card or debit card for the matter. Spy tools are now a thing of the past because even within Facebook itself, you can already start spying on any active advertisements that pages are running. And this has been the case since 2018, where Facebook, in an act of trying to be more transparent and, of course, to adjust with their Privacy Act, they start to allow anyone with a curious mind and provided you know where to look at to start viewing active advertisements that are being run by that page. So, at this point, I've just opened up two particular examples and I want to show you how you can spy on any Facebook pages that might or might not be running any advertisements. So for the purpose of this particular example, I'm going to show you Gary Vaynerchuk's FB page. And yes, he's the, uh, one of the top social media uh, advocators and moguls. And in every Facebook page that you check out, right, you can always go to this part called the page transparency. And by the way, you can also view this in mobile, all right? You want to check out the page transparency, click on see more. And again, I'm not saying that what I'm teaching you is a very rocket science kind of thing. If you know where to look for this kind of information, it's pretty much right there, okay? And what we're seeing here right now is that you wanna pay attention to this at the bottom, ads from this page. And ironically, this page is not currently running any advertisements. So with that said, when you see Facebook pages that are not running any active advertisements at all, this is what's gonna show. It's not running any active ads, okay? So let's go check out another example. This is by a renowned internet entrepreneur, Frank Kern. And let's take a look at page transparency again. And you can see that this page is currently running ads. So if you wanna take a look at what kind of advertisements that uh, this page is running at the present time, we'll click on go to ad library. 
and we'll take a look at the advertisements that are being run by the page but normally the filter would be by your country so here's the thing like for example I'm viewing this from Malaysia right now and he's not running any active advertisements here so what you want to do is you want to click on perhaps filter by all countries so we can take a look at the advertisements that he is running or this page is running okay or you can even filter by specific countries like United States and let's have a look so we know that these are the advertisements that are running to the United States in particular okay and again if you want to go filter you can check out all so once again, what I'm sharing with you here, to be very frank, it's not rocket science. Uh, again, if you know where to look at, this is pretty much the place where you can see the advertisements that are being run by a page. And this is useful in a sense that if you are going to be an agency and you're planning to run advertisements for your clients, you can spy on their competitors to see whether they are running any advertisements or if they are running any, at least get it sort of measure up what kind of competition you're up against now this does not mean that it's a license for you to copy what other people are doing and at the same time just know that your competitors or any other facebook marketer that know what they're doing they can pretty much spy on your advertisements just as well but again this should not concern you or worry you because in the grand scheme of things who you really want to impress or who you really want to get are your target customers or your target clients and most of the time uh, given the niche they're not going to be aware of what I'm sharing you despite the obvious unless you're obviously marketing to an internet marketing savvy crowd then that would be a different story altogether however that shouldn't be of concern now what's the use of spying on Facebook uh, ads that are being run by pages like this I just want to say that it's a good fact finding it's good for you to model after what is working or what rather what is not working and avoid them and uh, at least you get a, have a good idea what kind of competition you are up against all right so as you can see it's a very simple uh, tool and you don't have to buy any third-party tools like the old days uh, anymore it's pretty much right here in fact you can just go to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash library and you can pretty much check out any other uh, Facebook page. Now let's just say for the fun of it, let's go to Star Wars. Okay. Yeah, this is the official Star Wars. And uh, let's see if they're running any advertisements. And yes, they do. Okay. So you can see what kind of advertisements they're running. And if you, if you take a look, you can see what platforms they're running on as well. Like this is on Instagram uh, exclusively. This is on Facebook exclusively. And there we go. What's up everyone, Admin here, and we're coming to the final parts of the training already. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure that you have already followed through on all the past week's training in Facebook advertising, and more importantly, that you have already taken action, and how do we know that? Is that you have already started running ads on your own. So the purpose of this whole module is to show you how uh, Facebook advertising uh, can be optimized and can be tweaked along the way. So in this video, we're gonna talk about removing the losing ads and keeping the winners, and how to split tasks or how to tweak your uh, advertise, advertising further. Right off the bat, I'm gonna show you an example of one of our clients. And this is a rather unique client because we had picked up an aesthetic clinic and we're running a lead generation campaign for them. So whether you're selling your own digital product or you're selling your own e-commerce product or even run a lead generation campaign to a service, whether it's your own or other people's, that's okay. It's pretty much the same mindset and mentality. And I think this just goes to show how versatile Facebook advertising can be. Now, what you're seeing here right now is a lead generation campaign for the aesthetic clinic. And this is one of the ad sets and you'll see here this is ran for pretty much a half of the month actually and we we started off originally with a video campaign so that means there were no other image as it was just a video uh, this was running initially because we were having problems with the uh, client providing uh, images for us to use so we just ran our own version of the video and this was getting okay it was getting about uh, three leads for its duration and it was getting about ten dollars per lead now this could have been better even though it's still profitable because this aesthetic clinic is clearly selling a high ticket service where the clients would eventually enroll into a yearly package or a 
or a semi-annual package, that's okay. We know that they're going to make money, but of course, we are not satisfied with the results. We wanted it to be better. And then we started to introduce two more image ads. Now, take note that this was going to a Chinese-speaking market, but the mindset remains the same. The way you write the ads, whether it's in English or another language, is still pretty much the same. So we added two more image ads in a while, probably a couple of days later, and then we have all three ads running. So there's two image ads and one video ad. And we notice that we can see the stats here that this Chinese image ad number one was generating six leads. And the cost for acquiring the lead was a lot cheaper. It's like one third the cost, three dollars forty one cents. Wow. Okay. And then if you notice this other Chinese ad in uh, in, in image form here. Now this didn't generate any lead at all. All right. Now, you might notice that even if you run it for a good four to seven days, normally that's what I like to do. You want to run it for four to seven days. Uh, some people have this habit of quickly making a decision after 24 hours or 48 hours. Now, that's just rubbish, all right? When you do Facebook advertising, it should be a long-term game. And if you want to clearly see the winning ads and the losing ads, you should give it at least four to seven days. Now, four being the fastest, seven being the most ideal. You don't want to be changing up ads or making a decision so quick in the next 24, 48 hours because you need Facebook uh, to give it some time to rotate the ads and test out which one works. So how do you know which one's the winning ad and losing ad? Now, there's no clear cut way, but there's a few indications I look at strongly. Number one, when this was running for almost a week, we noticed that even though there are only three ads to rotate, the most of the spending went into the first image and still in the Chinese reader, but by virtue of the fact that this has been running much earlier, so that's why the ad spell is higher, all right? But you notice Chinese image two was spending only $2.96, all right? Now this is Facebook's way of telling you that it has a preference of running the other two ads. So when you see that the ad spend is a lot less for one couple of ads and it seems to heavily prioritize the other, it's kind of Facebook's way of telling you that these ads are more preferred than the other one. So that's one very strong indication already. So actually based on this alone, I would have turned this off already. All right. So that's one really good indication. Another one, if you want to take a look at, I like to look at cost per 1000 impressions. Now, ideally I like to keep it $10 or below. Uh, sometimes in some market, it can get a little bit higher than that, but that's okay. I try to keep this below $10 per uh, CPM or cost per 1,000 impression. So you can see here, all of this are doing pretty good. They're all below uh, $10, all right? Click through it. I try to keep it 1% uh, and above, ideally. But So I think this is slightly okay. Uh, I'll still keep it that way. And if you notice, image at one and, and video at one, they were getting more clicks. Now, if you see why the video has more clicks, because like I said, this ran earlier. But if they ran about the same time, then I think it would be pretty much a draw, okay? Now, if you notice that there are less clicks for image two, so again, another reason why I turn this off. And you can see that most importantly, these two ads were generating leads. Now, the video one was costing more than usual, and this was wanted, but I still kept both running because sometimes it's more like a, a reminder behavior that uh, some people like to click on video ads and watch. Some people like to just see the image and just get straight to the point. Um, surprisingly, for a lot of my campaigns, my image ads convert the best, but I will not discount video because videos uh, for a couple of my campaigns, they were doing very great. So ideally, you want to have both image and video. You don't just want to depend on one. All right. So this is one of the just some of the ways you can actually test out and see which was the, the losing ad and then you turn it off. Okay, I don't recommend deleting it because I like you to have a, a record of what was going on. So don't delete this kind of ads, just turn it off. All right. And then when you have these two ads left, if you want to continue split testing, which I recommend you to do until you're happy with the results, then you can start adding in more images or more ads for you to test out. However, I will not recommend that you test more than five in a row because even if you have a large ad spend, uh, Facebook is going to struggle to rotate the ads uh, because there's just too many ads to choose from. And if you're playing on a small budget, then the problem will be even more apparent. So normally I will keep it about three to five ads to split that at any given time. Just like this one, it was three ads. Okay. So maybe I'll just show you another example. Let's take a look at the English ad, which is pretty much the same thing. This is targeting the English speaking market. 
So you can pretty much see that they are the same ads, just that it's written in English um, this time. Okay, and again, if you notice, now although this campaign had ended because this was running for only two weeks for the client, if you notice that all those this was running at pretty much about the same time and a lot of the ad spend was going towards the video version all right and if you look at the leads form here if i were going to turn off any of this i probably turn off this particular one here image one because this get only two leads and there was getting a little bit more as well but i like this image too over here in this case because this is generating four leads and at a cost of only what two dollars and 24 cents is pretty good all right but of course uh, like I said, you want to look at a few factors before, before you decide which one you want to turn off. There's no hard and fast rule. Uh, ultimately, you should keep the profitable ad and the one that's getting you results. Uh, sometimes the cost per lead can be slightly higher than usual, but if it's getting you results and you have a way of covering and profiting that through your funnels, then uh, more power to you. All right. But between the three ads here, I'd say the image tool is the winner. If I were to turn off any of the ads here, probably the image one since very little ad spend is going here all right this is actually still okay all right probably add in another video in this case okay so that's really all there is to it i'll be putting up a pdf version of this whole uh, split tizing and optimizing so that you have a clearer picture and all the best in your facebook marketing success if you had already created your first campaign well done you've taken the first step now let's review again this was the same example in the previous video where i created a conversion campaign on how uh, to get leads for this upcoming live event all right so by clicking this and then we'll check it out there's only one ad set this was exactly what i created and it's running on a budget of five dollars a day now the question is that you probably want to duplicate the ad set and target other types of interest and that's okay all right, a lot of people do that. It's quite normal to have multiple ad sets in one campaign. So in this campaign, we're targeting the real estate uh, interest with mid value goods. And let's just say you're gonna target another keyword or detailed interest, all right? So here's how to duplicate the ad set and still target the same ads. So what do I mean by saying that? I'll show you in a while. And like I said previously, a lot of people make this mistake and I'll tell you what that mistake is, okay? So right now, just follow me on this and listen carefully, all right? What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna click on duplicate, all right? Original campaign, let's just leave it be. All right, so right now you see that there's a duplicate of this campaign here. And the name of the ad set is the same name except there's this word uh, hyphen copy right in front. Now ad set name is something I'll change last. Let's just go down and see what we're gonna change, all right? Conversion, website lead, let's leave that alone. Dynamic creative, leave that alone. Offer, leave it alone. Budget and schedule, you may choose to leave it alone as well. So normally if I'm gonna do $5 a day for per ad set, I'll just have, have several of them that way. Next up, let's go to audience. Custom audience, let's leave it alone. Location, in this case, because this is about a property and I wanna get people around the vicinity to come to our uh, free talk it, i'm going to leave this alone as well and age and gender and language let's leave it alone so the only thing that we're really going to change here is just the detailed targeting and we're going to find another uh, detailed interest So that took me a while and after putting in a few detailed targeting we are able to reach a potential reach of 320,000 people so it's okay but like I said this is just an example I'm showing you right now again ideally I would like to put it like 350,000 people to a million people all right so this takes a while to actually hone down and uh, you might also want to take a look at suggestions as well you can see uh, 
what other suggestions get we could come up with as well okay so I have like real estate entrepreneur and let's see how many we can get right now ah 400,000 people so by putting in a few of this data targeting you can put in suggestions and then Facebook will help make the suggestions for you all right so let's just say this is the data targeting that we want and then what we're going to do is we're going to leave the rest alone edit placements yep everything except audience network conversion seven days click so what seven days click means is that if someone takes action after seeing the ad and goes to your website but only takes action within the seven days then you will record the action as a lead okay you can see how smart facebook is right so let's rename this ad set to what it is right now so i know i'm aware that there's a lot over here so normally i just pick one of them i'm just going with income property okay so we've got potential we have 400 people and this is what the ad set is so i'm going to click publish you can see that took quite a while and it took me like i think probably a minute for the whole thing to get approved so if you see some slowdown, uh, don't be alarmed. I think Facebook is just heavy on the engine in the back office, so don't worry about it, okay? So right now, as you can see here, we already have two ad sets spending $5 a day each, and that is a total of $10 a day, all right? You can create more ad sets if you want. Uh, that depends on your uh, budget and your risk appetite, okay? Now, what's interesting is that this also has three ads in the ad set and this is quite identical to the ads that I created earlier in the other video so this might look very familiar to you so you think we're pretty much done here right not quite now you see even though the ads are the same but in actuality they're just duplicates and what happens that a lot of people they don't know how uh, the ad sets actually work or rather the ads in this case what happens is that when they have all these ads running and when people start to like and comment and then they will see another similar ad but without the history of it because they are actually different ads all together all right so i'm going to say it again because this is a part that a lot of people don't understand like let's just say for example this ad is running and i think the best way for me to show you is by clicking on this thing at the top right click on facebook post with comments okay i'm going to show you something very interesting and you'll understand why I'm very particular about it and a lot of people especially there's some social media agencies they don't even know they were doing this and it's kind of asinine if you think about it all right so what I just did here is that I'm going to the other ad set and I'm going to show you a very identical ad because it's basically just a copy all right so what you want to do is click on this window over here at the ad preview and then select Facebook post with comments okay so you can see here that these are same ads right they all look the same right but here's the problem if you pay attention to this browser at the top look at this um, post number okay one nine three six zero zero six four three three one five six three four six okay you can see that this is different all right this ends it with one six three zero this is six three four six you can tell that these are two different posts even though they are the same okay so what happens is that when you run ads and people comment like and share that normally happens uh, throughout time all right they might comment on this post and there's a history on it but this ad will have nothing all right it's a different ad altogether even though it looks the same all right so you can run ads for a long time but you don't build up that social proof and it's going to be a waste Again, I know I'm not really the kind of guy who believes in getting a lot of likes just to get a sale, but if you're going to be paying that kind of money to uh, have the ad run for a considerable amount of time, I think you will definitely want to build your social proof. So here's what you can do right now. I'll show you what you can do. Okay, so from now on, what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the original ad set you created, and it's this one, and go to ads. Let's start off uh, chronologically from first image at number one, two, and three. So let's go with the first one, and we're going to click on this uh, icon over here at the ad preview. Click Facebook post with comments. It'll open in a new tab. Let's do the same for the other one as well. And also the other one. All right, so there's a total of three. Here's what's going to happen. Okay. 
we're going to go back to this ad set. We're going to go to the second ad set that we had just duplicated. All right, let's take this and go back to this one. Now we're going to go through this one by one. Let's go off with ad one image one. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on use existing post, enter post ID. All right, there's no way you can select any of this past what I call the uh, post, by the way. It's not going to be a curate, so don't do that, okay? Now, you're going to post the ID over here. So let's go back to the tab that we had just created. Select this post ID over here. All right, copy, and then we're going to paste it here. All right, click Submit, and it's going to get updated, all right? So even though it looks the same, but right now this post is the same as the other one, so we don't have to worry about duplicated ads from now on, okay? In fact, this is just a one-off for this ad set, and when you duplicate this ad set again, you don't have to do that again anymore, okay? You can be very sure by clicking back on this uh, icon here next to the ad preview and see whether the post number is correct. Is this identical with this one? Yes, it is. So I'm jumping two different tabs right now, and they are the same ad post. That's just wonderful, all right? Save you some trouble over there. Let's go to image number two. Let's do the same thing. All right, click on use existing post, enter post ID, and then let's look for this post here. All right, that's the correct one. Let's copy this, paste, uh, copy this code over here after post. Paste it here, submit, and we're done with this one. Okay, let's just click publish for this. And let's do the same thing for the last, the third and the last one. You will do this the same for any number of ads you create. And like I say, after this ad set, if you duplicate it again, you wouldn't have that problem anymore. All right, I think you figured out the time's a charm. Let's do it. Copy the post uh, link up here with these numbers. All right, go back here. Click use existing post and the post ID. Paste it. Submit. Okay. That's all there is to it. This is how you can quickly and accurately duplicate your ad sets without uh, creating multiple different types of ads. And like I said, that's just not really a smart way of going about doing it. And I've just uh, saved you some trouble over there with social proof. And that's all there is to it. Now, one of the most powerful features in Facebook ads is that you can do retargeting against all the people who had been to your website or took a certain engagement or action, but they had not made the next action, which is usually making the purchase. And sometimes people get busy for some reason, or it's just not convenient for them to make the purchase right now. They could be seeing your ad while they're driving, or they've been to your sales page, but they're not decided yet. And then you have the ad follow them for quite some time, even all the way up to 180 days. Yep, Facebook advertising allows you to do that. However, personally, I don't use up all 180 days because the way I work is that if someone doesn't take action at all after like seven or even up to 30 days, I'm not gonna spend my money following that kind of lead anymore because they're just not interested to take action even after a whole month. So even though retargeting can be done for dirt cheap even today, but you don't want to be spending your money reaching out to people who are not interested because that hurts your relevant score and I'd rather you use that money to reach out to people who might be interested, okay? So one of the first steps when it comes to doing Facebook retargeting is that you need to create an audience or what I call a custom audience. So to do that, this is going to be the first step of out of like two steps and we're going to do just one video step by step on this one right now. So to get to a page like this, you need to go to, you can just search in the bar at the top right here, uh, audiences, and then you arrive at a page like this, or you can just go to the top left menu, go to all tools, and look for audiences under assets. Okay, assets, audiences, and then you arrive at a page like this. Again, this is account has been around for some time for this particular ad account. If your account is new, then you're not gonna see anything at all. And for beginners, the amount of data might seem intimidating, but don't worry about it. It is actually very easy once you look through all that and get some practice, okay? So this will also lead up to things like creating a lookalike audience, which I'll explain that in another video. Uh, that's another really cool stuff there. And let's talk about 
the basics first, okay? How to create a custom audience with the intention of doing retargeting. So the most basic retargeting you can do right now is to create a type of audience where people have been to a certain specific web page, but they didn't make a purchase or take the next action that you want them to do. It could be buying a product or it could be booking a call with you. So at the top left, you see this thing called create audience and then click on custom audience. All right, so you're prompt with a few questions here. Now, personally, I don't even use all of them. I probably just use like three out of five out of this. I use customer file, website traffic and engagement, but I don't really use this tool at all. Not related to me, okay? So I think there's gonna be the same case for you as well if you are an information or, or digital marketer. Now, what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna create a very simple custom audience of people who have been to a certain web page, but they didn't make any purchase whatsoever, okay? So let's click on this one. Now, at this point, you should have already created your pixel. This is already taught in one of the very early uh, weeks modules. And you should be seeing a, a, a pixel for you to choose from. So I have like three here for this particular account. Normally you have like one at least. So include people who meet any of the following criteria. You select the pixel that you want. So I choose the one that I want. And it's better to have people who visit specific web pages. Now there are a few types over here, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. It might be a little bit too advanced from beginners. Let's talk about something simple for now. People who visit specific web pages in the past n number of days, it can be up to a maximum of 180 days. Okay, so let's just put 30 days for a sake of example. If you want, you can put like seven days, 14 days, totally up to you. So let's put 30 days right now. And you want them to have been to a certain website, but they didn't make any purchase. So this is going to be an example. All right, I'm just making this up right now. So if you, if you want to make a certain type of people who have been to a few types of web pages, that's okay as well. You can put in more than one address. So just for the fun of it, I'm going to put in these addresses here. Okay. All right. So let's just say people have been to any of these three web pages but they didn't take a specific action. And let's just say this is gonna be a, uh, a purchase, all right? So they are supposed to get to a thank you page, but they have not been here. So I'm just making this up right now. All right, now this address doesn't exist, obviously, but I'm just doing it for an example here. So what I just did here is that you have people who have been to this specific web pages, but when I click exclude, all right, excluding people who have been to this page. That means to say that people who have bought this product or been to this download page, that's how you know they bought a product or, or they made a sign up, they will stop seeing the ad that you're about to show them. So this is how you do very targeted retargeting. So you don't want to be showing ads to people who have already bought your product. You preferably you want to show them something else. And this is what allows you to fine tune and laser target your Facebook advertising, okay? So this is very simple. I'm not gonna do too much here. That's how easy it is, okay? And once you get better, then you can start exploring the other features and options, which I'll talk more in the advanced retargeting method only when you're ready. So let's just give this audience a name. Now, personally, I'm a neat freak, so I like to give it a proper name. So I call it Visitors um, FBX Local Test, all right? Because to be frank, I already created a very similar custom audience for this actual campaign. Uh, although some of these pages are fictional right now, that's okay. Just want to prove a point to you. Okay, you can give it a name for it, visitors at this um, project or, or the name of the website and a description. Now, the description is only for you to see, so don't worry about it. But as you start creating more custom audience, it might get a little bit more overwhelming. So it's better to just be organized right from the start. So I'm just going to put visitors that had been to Facebook ads local but did not... Uh, purchase all right so you can see how easy that is click create audience and there you go it's done that's how easy it is now I'm going to show you another type of custom audience you can create now there are a few types you can create here okay that was the most basic one and you can see that this is being populated you can leave it alone when you come back in like a few minutes or maybe some time afterwards 
it'll be ready. Okay. Now I want to show you another type of custom audience you can create. Now, have you ever wondered why people are able to retarget you after you watch a certain video at a certain length or a certain amount of time? This is how you do it. So if you're using videos as uh, content marketing, you have videos that you show on your Facebook page and people are watching. You know, there's a very good bet that people who are watching your videos at least halfway through are at least interested in what you have to offer or in your message. So what you do is that you can target the audience based on how long they've been engaged with your content on Facebook. So what we do is very simple. Let's go to create uh, engagement. And you can see that there are a few types here. Again, I don't use all of this. You only need to use a few of them. And let's just go with video. Okay. You can choose any type of engagement. People have watched 25% uh, all the way to 95%. Then what some hardcore marketers do is that they actually select all of this so they can retarget with uh, either different ads or track their behavior. So for simplicity sake, I'm just going to start with 50% of the video. And you need to choose any of the videos you had added so far. All right, you can choose more than one. Uh, that's okay. For this example, I'm going to just choose uh, one video, right? Just for an example. All right, I'm just going to choose this for example, okay? So in the past 365 days, now you don't really have to make it that long. Uh, probably in the past 30 days, that's good enough. But I'll leave the length up to you. All right, so audience name, let's give it a name. I'm going to call it... Uh, video video views uh, name of the video all right low ticket sps that's the name of the video all right so i'm not only really like to write it more precise people that watched 50 percent of this video okay and click create audience so in the next uh, tutorial i'm going to show you how you can actually weave in all this custom audience based on their behavior. So what we're doing here right now is quite simply, we're just uh, having Facebook track all the, the behaviors and all that, okay? Now let me show you yet another kind of custom audience you can create for the fun of it. Engagement. And do you know that people who have interacted with your Facebook page or your Instagram account, if it's attached to this, you can even target them as well. So you might have come across some ads so far by some marketers who, who went along the lines of, thanks for checking out my Facebook page or my Instagram account. And uh, I have this free offer I'd like to share with you as a new visitor of mine. You might have come across that kind of ad before if you have been observant. So what you can do is that you can go to Facebook page, all right, include people who have met the criteria, list your page that, and people who have engaged or visited your page in the last uh, n number of days. So I like the word this engagement because, you know, people have just visited the page. They might or might not be interested. They're just curious, but not interested or even let alone committed. So I, I prefer engage somehow. That means we know that they have interacted by, you know, liking, commenting, or even write, write to you. So you know that these people are at least interested. Okay. Or people who are engaged with any post or ad. This is really cool as well. So you can see that people have like make reactions, shares, comments on any of your posts. You know that these people are interested. And sometimes they don't even have to like your page somehow. But the fact that they're there, you can actually retarget those kind of people. Okay, so you can see that there are a few types here going on. I'm just gonna put this as uh, 30 days. All right, you can put a max of how many you want. That's totally fine, okay? So I'm gonna just call it FB page uh, admin low uh, post engagement. Okay, people who have interacted with any of my posts, I'll, I'll like to target them, right? People that engaged with my FB post. All right, we can click create audience. And yeah, we have another one here. You can create as many types of audience as you want and target them. Now let's just create one more for completion sake. Uh, create audience, custom audience, let's go to engagement. And you can do the same for your Instagram business as well if you have a profile attached to it. So I have one here going on. Uh, people have engaged with your business. That means it could be with the content or ads. People have visited as well. Um, although this is very shallow because just because people have been to your, your page doesn't mean they're necessarily interested at all, like I said earlier. So I prefer engagement and I want to target people that are interested at least, okay? 30 days, I'm just going to put IG admin low, or this is my handle here. Uh, people that engaged with my IG profile, okay? That's how easy it is. So we've created a bunch of custom audience here and as you can see, I've created a bunch more before this, that's okay. And uh, 
all these are all of their examples but these are for real okay now you can do the same for yourself and if you're doing it the first time I know the first time might seem a little bit intimidating that's okay I want you to get a bit of practice create a few custom audience and don't worry you don't have to use all of them you'll get better with practice all right so stay tuned for the next part of the training we're not quite done yet I'm going to show you how to do a simple basic retargeting in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your custom audience based on your mailing list. Now, this video is recorded separately from the other video on how to create your custom audience for the purpose of doing retargeting because there's a chance that you are starting out brand new and I don't expect you to have a list if you're just starting out. However, if you've already been in business for some time, you have a list of your customers somewhere, it could be a database and especially their email address, then guess what you have a massive advantage where with it you can not only run advertisements straight to your existing uh, list of subscribers and customers you can also create a look-alike audience and what does look-alike audience mean is that with the data that you give to Facebook Facebook can then run through it and then seek out other similar uh, customers or similar people like the email addresses that you give Okay, so that's how amazing this whole uh, Facebook marketing technology is and it's just going to get better throughout time. All right, so let's not waste any time. I'm going to show you how this is done. Again, this is only for you if you already have a mailing list of some kind, where, where there's all the customer details and all that. Now, typically, how do you know that you have enough is that you should have at least 1,000 email addresses and above for this to, whole thing to make sense. All right, so the more you have, the better so that Facebook can fine tune it. And if you have less than that, uh, I think you can give it a go somehow, but it's better to have at least 1,000 email addresses and above for you to take full advantage of this uh, feature. Okay, so let's not waste any time. Let's go to create audience, custom audience, and then we're going to select customer file. All right. Now, there are a few options here. If you're using MailChimp, then obviously you choose this, but most of the time you'll be using this add customers from your own file or copy and paste data. Okay. So over here, you're expected to upload your CSV or text file. Now, whether you're using Aweber, uh, GetResponse, or any autoresponder service, you can import the CSV file. So the CSV file includes all the data of your subscribers or your customers. So in, incidentally, I have one that I would like to add right now, and I'm doing this example for you. So I'm going to click Upload File, and this is the CSV file that I had just downloaded from my Aweber account for a particular list. Uh, this is a local mailing list. I'm going to add it in and then, okay, you can give it a name. So right now it's in gibberish. It's better to give it a proper name. So I'm going to call it subscribers happy ads local. And that's the source of this subscribers uh, data. Okay. People that subscribe to happy ads local bracket Malaysia, because this is a local uh, business. Okay, so, oh, I forgot, original data source, see, select the origin of this artwork can be from customers and partners, direct from customers. So since mine is direct, I'm going to choose this one, okay, and that's true because Facebook does not like spam at all and you don't want to ruin the, uh, don't try to game the system, that's what I'm saying, okay, direct from customers, now this button is selectable, let's click next, and then over here, now don't panic when you see this, okay. Basically, what it's trying to do is like it's trying to make sense of what the names are about. So the names, okay, you just want to match the data to all these things that I think uh, Facebook has picked up. So this looks like names. I'm going to call it first name. Uh, message number, this is not important. It's not correct. So do not upload anything that doesn't make sense. We just don't upload it, okay? So I'm just not going to upload this as well. I'm going to leave almost all this alone. This is IP address. Okay, there's no such thing as IP address here. Okay, web form. Let's leave that alone. Country is correct. Um, this is a city. Let's. Okay, I'm gonna put city. That's correct. Postal code. Let's choose zip postal code. Now, the more data you give to Facebook, the better it is, right? But if if your autoresponder doesn't capture any of this, then that's okay. You just want to make sure that the details are matched up. All right. And for the record, I use Aweber. I think it's quite. Uh, reasonably good enough for most beginners and I've been using it for a long time so what we have here is five columns are mapped and will be uploaded okay let's click upload and create 
It's going to take a while depending on how big the list is. And this is only half the list right now, like 489 uh, entries. So again, like I said, it's better to have at least 1,000 and above. And I just add this throughout time, all right? So there you go. This is how you add your customers or your subscriber list to Facebook. And with this, you can start, uh, you can see there's some suggestions here already. You can create an ad to target these people right away, or you can create a look-alike audience, which I'm gonna share in a separate video. Let's click done and we're done here. All right, let's recap. So far, I had created a custom audience, which are the people from my mailing list, and I've added this on Facebook's audiences. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here right now is we're gonna create what we call a look-alike audience. And what this means again is that right now, all this while we've been using a detailed interest uh, for our targeting. That's all the very standard keywords that we've been putting into the ads manager all this while. Okay, now we can up the game by having Facebook now search through its network of other people that are similar to the customers or the subscribers that you have just uploaded here. I mean, isn't it just amazing? So for example, if you are running an e-commerce business and you're selling uh, cosmetics, all right, uh, or, or women beauty products, for example, okay, and you've already got more than a thousand people like that, and you add all this uh, database to Facebook, and what Facebook does is that it'll run through this existing mailing list that you have here and try to look for people like that. Isn't that just wonderful? So this is how you can actually expand and scale your business uh, to the next level when you start making some money and you get some profits and of course you build your list along the way. So again, remember that Facebook is just a third party platform. It's amazing and all that, but in the end you want to have more control. And that's why I want you to build your own list and you have your own medium to control as well. Okay. So I talk a lot more about that in my email marketing training program, but um, that's gonna be something else, okay? So let's get going with this one, if you remember this. In fact, I had created some lookalike audience in the past. Let me just show you this one, really quick. Here, I'm just going to edit. Okay, so on the left here, you see that the audience name is called lookalike NZ. NZ stands for New Zealand at 1% for a particular main list, all right? and the size is 32,000. So this is called a lookalike. Now, if you don't understand the terminology just yet, that's okay. I don't expect you to catch everything in one go. And like I said many a times throughout this whole trading, uh, practice makes perfect. So you know what? Let's go create a lookalike audience right now by going to the top left, select lookalike audience, and we're gonna choose a source, all right? So what we do here is that there are many types of sources that we can go around here. We can go to other sources. And I'm going to type in the word subscribers FBX local. That was the one I had just created just now. Okay, so this will be the source. And location. Now you can name any country that you want. So for example, mine, I'm going to have it here in Malaysia because this is a local mailing list and I'll find people similar to that. Although you can find people like that in other countries as well. But right now I'm just going to put Malaysia. Uh, because for this particular list, I'm having only people within the country, all right? Next time, if you want to find similar people like that in other countries like the United States and all that, you can go ahead, but I recommend you just put one country over here and no more than that. So if I do this, for example, all right, uh, please don't do this, okay? Uh, this is not uh, the way you should do it. Just keep it to one country. And next one, you see there's this thing called audience size, all right? And if you don't understand what this means, well, if you check this out, that's like from 0 to 10%. So what this does is that basically the lower the number, like 1%, it shows like the closest proximity match to your source. So this being the closest, this being the furthest, all right? But I recommend you just start off with 1% right now. Uh, very simple. Now let's check out the advanced options. Okay, maybe just create one type of audience, okay? That is all we need right now. I'll show you how, how to do it, okay? Select advanced option, we're gonna put zero to 1%. Okay, let's leave it alone and click create audience. Okay, so we have just created a lookalike audience based on 1% close match to this mailing list, all right? Again, like I said many a times, the bigger the list you have, the better it is, so it's more targeted, but it seems like I'm able to make do with just below 500 email addresses, uh, but the more you have, the better it is, okay? So 
But don't just stop here though. It's better to just have a few more. Some people even do it up to 10%. That's okay. I'll show you how to do it again. So let's click on create audience, look like audience, and let's choose the source again. Practice makes perfect. Let's do it. Let's choose the same one again. Subscribers at FBX local. Location will be Malaysia. All right, or your the respective country that you want to target. Let's choose advanced options. Number of audience will be one, and it's going to be between one to two percent. So what this means now, compared to the, the other uh, lookalike audience we just created, we're going to look at this particular affinity where you're now looking at the two percent. So we're just going to create audience, and we're done here. Okay, so we've got two percent going on. All right, so you know what? Let's just do one more uh, for practice. Let's just do one more and let's be sure about it. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the process. So I'm gonna put number one audience here and let's put this to between two to 3%. Okay, so let's just get going. And there we go. So we have a total of three different lookalike audience. And with this, you can actually run uh, a different ad set to different um, groups of people here. And this way, you can find out which group might be more responsive to your ads or who's buying or who's opting into your list. All right. So the way you start running the ads is actually very, very similar. And that's how you do it. Okay. So I'm not going to keep this long. That's how easy it is. And just keep practicing. You'll get better with it and you'll understand better as well. I'm going to continue from where I last left off on creating your custom audience. And now that we have already done that, I'm going to show you how to create the Facebook ad retargeting. So what you want to do right off the bat is that in campaigns, you're going to create a conversion campaign. Now I'm going to show you one of my immediate examples. Right now it's easier that way. But if you want to backtrack things, you want to start with campaigns, click create. And then we're going to go to conversions and then uh, you can call it uh, retargeting uh, name of the campaign all right now i'm not going to actually do this because i want to show you an existing one that i had already done so it's easier for you to see so right here this is one of my retargeting campaigns and this worked pretty pretty good all right so this is for people who have joined my plr mastery and they got my free ebook and i have a special subscriber deal where i sell my private label books for just one dollar each and that's like a no-brainer all right so what i do here is i created this retargeting campaign i'm just just check it out really quick this is the ad set here okay so here's how you create an ad set like this okay you can create from scratch you can give it a name right away retargeting and then the name of the offer so conversions you're going to have to choose purchase all right there's nothing else just choose purchase for your uh, conversion here Dynamic creative, you can live this out. Budget and schedule. Now, normally when it comes to retargeting, I always just put $5. Unless you're expecting a lot more traffic, then you can up the budget in some cases. But I would start for as low as $5. And don't worry, if you're not going to use up, really use up $5 a day for the next 30 days. In fact, in one month, I only spent like maybe like 20 bucks or so for retargeting, but I make back a lot more. Because retargeting is still dirt cheap. You're only targeting people who have been to your site but didn't take a specific action and that's what it is so you can just leave the daily budget at five dollars now here's an interesting thing audience custom audience you're going to select the uh, audience that we had created earlier all right so this is obviously this is a working campaign i created an audience like this already and what you do is you select custom audience and then you select the type of people that you want to target so this is my custom audience all right if you remember the video views and uh, the visitors that we have created just now, this is where it belongs. Okay, locations, you can leave this blank or you can just put worldwide. You can actually just put worldwide if you want to. That means everyone in the world. Okay, this is again, this is totally up to you because this offer is universal. I sell to uh, a mass market where anyone in the world can actually be buying the product, but this is just retargeting. Okay, you can either leave this blank or you can just leave it worldwide. Okay, age, the maximum and the minimum, 18 to 65 plus, anybody, unless you are very specific about who you want to retarget, that's okay, but I generally leave it alone. Gender all, languages, preferably just English all, all right? Because my whole thing is in English anyway. Okay, detail targeting, this one you can afford to leave it up and leave it blank because 
all this ad does exclusively target is the custom audience. This is the, probably the most important part of this step-by-step uh, -step tutorial right now. Okay, connections, let's leave this alone. Ad placement, I'm again, I'm really particular about this, but in this case, I, I wanted to choose everything, but if you wanna do like what I've been teaching you all this while, you can have uh, everything except the uh, audience network, okay? You can have everything except the audience network, that's fine. And then uh, bottom down here, conversion, seven days click or one day view, this part has not changed at all, all right? So you can see that this is how you create the uh, retargeting, okay? Now I'm not gonna actually change this, I just wanna show you how it works. All right, so once you create a retargeting, then just like creating a normal ad, you have to come up with the ad for this. And this is one of the ads that I'm running out, almost the only, I think it's just the only one, okay? So I created an ad here where I put my Facebook page, Instagram, so that people who go to Instagram can also see the same ad. And if you watch my previous video, then you know that you will want to limit the number of characters in your ad to like 2,000 uh, characters and no more than that. Okay, keep it less. So this is my ad. And this picture here is not my picture or, or anything like that. It's actually a stock photo and I thought this is pretty good. So sometimes Facebook ads can come up with some really good stock photos. If it grabs attention, just do it, okay? So in this case, I run a no-brainer deal. Nine private labor rights for $1 each, okay? I'm running a special subscriber deal only, okay? You can get it all at this link. So if you're wondering why I can write it like this and, and be very specific about who I'm targeting is because that's exactly what I just said. People who have already joined my mailing list, they've already opted in. Therefore, they get to see this special offer running right now. You're not going to see this ad run to the public because people who have no idea who I am or no idea what this is about, obviously, they're not going to respond to this offer. So I want to have you know that this is doing currently about, uh, this whole funnel for this offer is doing about 3 to $4 earnings per click because of all the, the funnels that I put at the back. So that's how powerful a funnel can be. And this is currently doing a five times return on ad spend. Okay, so this is how you do a uh, retargeting. I'm not going to run through the ad creatives again because I taught this in another video, but I just want to show you how a retargeting actually works. And once you save it, and voila, you will have uh, this retargeting ad running only to people who have been to a certain web page or a website. And you can also do the same retargeting for people who are on your uh, buyers list as well and you can add them into your custom audience okay so that's all there's to it for the basic retargeting you can get better at practice and once you're ready I can show you some advanced retargeting as well so speak soon all right in this video I'm going to show you how to maximize your campaigns with a campaign budget optimization or CBO in short so this is probably something that you might have heard from other internet marketers or when you're creating your Facebook advertisements for the first time, you would have definitely come across this campaign budget optimization. Now the rule of thumb is that when you're just starting out, especially on a low budget like 5 to $10 a day, you probably don't even need to use this at all. So most of the time you would have turned this off. But with that said, when do you start using campaign budget optimization or CBO in short? When do we start actually doing that, okay? Now, first of all, you need to understand what CBO actually does. So to put it very uh, simply, campaign budget optimization distributes your budget across all your ad sets and it's gonna funnel to where it gets the most promising results. So for example, if you're running about five to 10 different ad sets right now, and what it's gonna do is that you're basically trusting Facebook to distribute the daily budget across all the ad sets, all right? So let me just show you a quick example over here, all right? Now this is a campaign, a conversions campaign, which is currently turned off. I'm gonna turn it on afterwards so we can have a look at it. And as you can see here that this had spent about $2,100, okay? And historically, there had been quite a number of ad sets that were run, a total of 19 of them. And this is with the CBO currently turned on. But when it started, it wasn't like that, okay? Normally, when you start running a campaign for the very first time, you will want to put an allocated budget to each ad set. So for example, if I were to test all these 19 ad sets, I'd probably put five to $10 a day, all right? So let's just say for math simplicity, we're gonna put $10 a day. That means 19 ad sets times 10 would have been $190 a day, all right? 
and we're gonna run this for like a few days and what's gonna happen in a few days is that we're gonna see that some AdSense will perform and the rest will not, okay? And after running this for quite some time, I've decided that what constitutes as a good cost per lead will be anything $3 and below, all right? Anything that with a $3 per lead and below for this webinar campaign, I would consider it as good. So at this point, if I were to reactivate this campaign, I'm only going to run uh, ad sets that have a very good cost per lead. So let's just take a look at each of them in particular. Like this one over here, it's been running for quite a while, three leads at $6. I'm gonna probably turn this off, okay? I'm gonna turn this off. And if you wanna select multiple ad sets that you wanna edit, what you can do is you can use, make use of the checkbox here. I'm gonna select anything that is above $3, okay? Uh, anything above $3, which is, yep, yeah, about this one. And I'm gonna click on edit and turn off. There we go. Bear in mind that what you're seeing here right now is a campaign that has ran for quite some time. We spent about $2,000 over here. And uh, again, whether you want to spend this much or not, it's totally up to you. Everyone's got their own uh, preferences. But what I want to do right now, I'm using this as an example, where I'm going to start running ad sets that has been proven to have a $3 per lead and below. So I'm going to just select everything that's $3 and below, okay, which is about this. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll still consider this. Okay, this is like three dollars zero seven. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, I might still consider this. It's only like overshot a little. That's okay. All right. And there we go. So we've got quite some ad sets that had performed three dollars and and uh, below. Okay, and I'm gonna put them to turn on. All right. Now, depending on how many ad sets that you're editing at a time, this might take several seconds, so we're just going to leave it at that. And there we go, all right? So what's going to happen now is that I've basically, I'm taking all the winning ad sets right now, and I'm going to restart this campaign again. So we have a total of, how many ads do we have here, okay? Uh, we have about 12 selected. So if you want to see how many we have selected, you can just take a look at the top here. We have 12 ad sets that are selected. And the next question you, know, you might ask is, how much budget should I set aside for this CBO campaign? So typically for every one ad set, I put at least $5 or, or $10 for that matter. It's totally up to you. But I wouldn't recommend anything below five US dollars. So let's just say I'm playing on a bare minimum right now. 12 times five would be about, I'd say, that would be $60 if I'm not mistaken, all right? Let me just do a quick math here. So, so I'm gonna make sure that my math is not bad. Okay, $60, okay? I'll probably put anywhere from 60 to $120. So let's just say I wanna run this at $60, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restart this campaign by turning this on. And I'm gonna click on, uh, edit this campaign, and I'm gonna change this to $60, all right, $60. Because if you put anything really, like a small number, like anything below $5 per ad set, what's gonna happen is that Facebook is gonna to struggle to distribute the budget to even the winning ad sets, all right? So this is why you don't wanna put anything too low. And if you're not keen on spending even this amount as well, what you wanna do is that you wanna reduce the number of ad sets, okay? So with that said, I just wanna say that for as many ad sets that you're running in, in a single campaign, I'll allocate five to ten dollars to that. So we have got twelve campaigns, uh, twelve ad sets running right now. So I'll put at least the bare minimum sixty dollars. And if I want to run just ten ad sets, I'll put this at you know fifty dollars for that matter. Okay. So I hope this part makes sense. And uh, as a closing note, should any beginners ever run CBO for a start, I do not recommend that because when you're starting out, it is better to test various ad sets. That means various targeting to see which one performs better. And after quite a while, you will probably have a few winning ad sets like what you're seeing here right now. And we'll start running CBO campaigns only at a second stage. So I hope this helps. What's up? And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can tidy up your account a little bit because as time goes on, you would have added quite a number of page posts, uh, created a lot of ads, you would have uploaded quite some media like images and videos which you wind up not really using, and as time goes on, you would have cluttered your ad account for sure. So I wanna show you two places where you can do a little bit of spring cleaning if you would like to. 
and let's start off with the media library so how do we access the media library is by going to your business.facebook.com or logging into your business account and hit to the top left menu and scroll down to media library and we'll earn up on a page like this so by default you will be able to click on your ad account which is where we're at right now this is just an example and as you can see in this particular account we have uploaded quite some images and videos and we're not going to use all of them so if you want to delete any of this by any chance we'll click on one of them for example and you can see at the bottom right there is an option to delete image and that's exactly what we're going to do but be careful though because if this image is being used for any advertisement it is going to definitely ruin your ad so what's going to happen is that if you delete this advertisement right now or rather i would say you delete this image the advertisement that is using this image will still be running but with another thumbnail which is probably a default lifted off from that page itself so you're going to be extra careful with what you're deleting here all right but in this case i'm really going to do just that so i'm going to click continue and we're done okay so this is just an example i'll just click on another one as well all right or maybe another one here and i'm just going to delete this okay now that's not all the next thing I want to show you is page posts. So how do we access the page posts is by going to the top left menu again and click on page post. So it's right somewhere at the bottom of the list here. So it's, it takes a bit of effort to scroll down here. So go on the page post and you'll see the amount of posts that we have published for whether it's as content for the FB page uh, schedule and especially you want to take notice of the advertisements. All right. Now, whether you realize this or not, every time you make any edits or a copy of advertisements that you already have, it's just going to make clones of it with different IDs. So visually, it might look the same to you, but on the back office, you can see that there's like multiple IDs for a very similar advertisements. And again, if you want to keep things a little bit neat, what you want to do is you want to click on the page post that you would like to delete. Like for example, this is the one. And all right, you can see actions up here. All right, click on delete, and you'll be prompt. This post will be permanently deleted. Which again, I just want to remind you to be cautious about it because if this advertisement is still being ran or it's active, if you delete this, then obviously you won't be able to run it again. So before you delete anything, you just want to be extra careful uh, that the advertisement is no longer being run right now. Okay. So that's just a little tip on how you can tidy up your ad account a little bit so you, have, you minimize the amount of clutter that you have. What should you do if or when your ad account gets disabled? So if you're watching this video right now, either A, you had this happen to you, or B, you're just curious to know what will happen to you uh, as you run Facebook ads more and more, and maybe you should be mentally prepared as well. Now, I want you to know that having an ad account that gets shut down, that gets disabled or restricted is part and parcel of running Facebook ads. And no one is exempted from this. You have people that spend a few hundred dollars a month to people that spend uh, hundreds of thousands to even millions of dollars a month. And this kind of thing still does happen. Okay, So should it happen to you, and there's a high likelihood that will as you run Facebook ads uh, more and more, I just want you to be mentally prepared and know that this is just part and parcel of running on one of the most uh, advertised social media platforms in the planet, okay? And when you do, don't freak out, okay? You might get an email like this, ad account disabled for policy violation. Now, I'm showing this to you in a form of a screenshot because I don't have an actual account that I can show this to you right now because either they've already been appealed successfully or they're already in the graveyard somewhere, okay? So anyways, I want to prepare you on how to get your account back should this happen to you. Now, sometimes you might find that when you're editing your advertisements or randomly a glitch happens and your ad account gets disabled, even though you didn't do anything wrong and you have followed the policy to the latter. All right. Or maybe you could be operating in a niche that is not a controversial at all. All right. So don't freak out. What you want to do is that you want to appeal. All right. So you want to appeal and they will probably give you a link right off the bat. If you find this to be a mistake, give us more information and you'll be able to click on the link and arrive at a simple form like this, all right? Is this account? You're going to put yes and provide information. Now, you don't really have a lot to write here, to be very frank. The word, the word count or the correct account is quite limited. But here's the thing. 
You never want to admit your mistake or be apologetic. Now, I know this might sound strange, it might sound counterintuitive and even douchey for that matter, but I find that a lot of people tend to just say sorry even when they really didn't make a mistake. But what's happening here is that you're putting into writing for the internal team to use it as a reason against you, all right? You've admitted your guilt in writing and we're gonna stand by our final decision to keep your account restricted or disabled, all right? And take it from me, I've done this mistake so many times that I learned it the hard way, okay? So what you wanna do is like never admit your mistake. Instead, you wanna word your appeal that you have read the ads policy and make sure you do by the way, all right? So you know what you're talking about. You are compliant with all the ads policy, it's compliant whatsoever and you didn't do anything wrong. So please review and reinstate my account. That should be the way you word your appeal, okay? Now, if you didn't do anything wrong and uh, everything should be fine, you will have your account back. So this can take anywhere from a few hours to up to three days in my experience. Now, I'm not saying this will happen to everybody. I just find that ha having this happen to me so many times, this can be from, from a few hours to three days that you can get your account back and you will get an email that goes something like this. All right, this will be the best email that to receive the best good news if you're sorry relief and you can continue advertising. But I do advise that in the meantime, if while you're ahead, you might want to open more than one ad account and if possible, more than one Facebook business account. It, to what I know, one profile can open a maximum of two business accounts. You can do just that. If you have a family member or a spouse or a business partner, between among you, you guys, you can actually open multiple business accounts. And the reason why I recommend that is to spread your risk and diversify it so that you can continue running your advertisements uninterrupted, okay, without uh, any delays whatsoever. Now, with that said, there will still always be a chance that your Facebook business account or ad account will be permanently disabled. And sometimes this could be, well, it could generally be your mistake for uh, not complying by their ads policy. So for example, if you're operating in a sensitive market like weight loss and you're using choice of words that are sensitive or just doesn't comply with a Facebook ads policy, then they do reserve the right to permanently uh, disable your account. And at this point, you have no choice but to use another new ad account elsewhere with a different identity whatsoever. And just be careful not to repeat the same mistakes again. And this usually comes down to the choice of words, like, you know, losing weight, for example, all right, fat and things like that, okay? Now, when it comes to make money, this is another sensitive, controversial market where people use very blatant words like, you know, make money while you sleep, passive income, autopilot. Now, these are words that you really want to avoid. And let's just say you ever have your ad account uh, disabled for these reasons, you might want to start looking at the choice of words that you're using. Do not use back the same advertisements. Do not uh, use back those kind of words again, all right? So you just leave and let learn. Now, I think the reason why I'm going at length about this whole matter is because there's been a lot of people that give up on Facebook advertising after uh, seeing some results and then when this happened to them, they give up or they take too long to recover. Like they might take a few months to try to get another account and things like that. But ideally, you want to be able to continue your operations within the same day with another ad account. But of course, be cautious. Don't repeat the same mistakes of the first ad account that got disabled in the first place, okay? So I hope this helps and uh, have fun marketing on Facebook. It's still very profitable and it's still the best social media platform for advertising on this planet. Okay, this is gonna be a very short video and very straight to the point. But at the same time, I know that some people that run Facebook ads might struggle with this uh, on an emotional and uh, psychological level as well. So when you run advertisements, you can almost always expect that you're gonna get spam comments and some really rude comments that's totally unfounded like this one over here. Now, I just want you to know that this is part and parcel of running Facebook ads because when you run ads, it's always going to a cold audience and some of them might just project their insecurities or their negative thoughts onto your post, no matter how well-intentioned you are. So the short and very straightforward answer is to just hide delete and bad really so I don't personally think it's a good idea for you to engage with uh, this kind of comments unless you are considered a witty person or you're gonna build some quite some goodwill that I do not know okay but the short answer is don't waste your energy on that I want you to focus on conversions and the end results so how do we remove comments like this and, uh, and ban them it's quite simply by 
clicking on the command here we click on hide command and then we'll click on ban the person and then finally we just click on delete and we're done simple you know after running your campaign for quite some time have you ever wondered where your leads are really coming from where your customers are hailing from uh, are they seeing this from facebook are they seeing from instagram uh, what is the age group like who's responding most okay are they seeing this on desktop or mobile and the way to find out all of this it's all in the data and i'm going to show you how to do just that this is really exciting stuff when you log into your ads manager so this is just a one of the uh, simple test accounts right now and if you take a look at this particular campaign it's running a lead generation conversion objective okay so so far for this particular month it's generated slightly more than 115 leads at a cost per lead of 131 us dollars so this is on a campaign level let's take a look at ad sets okay what's really interesting here is that you can take a look at a breakdown on, on any level but preferably you take a look at it on a campaign or an ad set level so i tell you what let's just double back on campaign because this is the more of like an overarching view and we'll take a look at breakdown so it's at the top right menu here you can check out by time or delivery or by action but normally you want to take a look at delivery and this is probably where you're going to take a look at the breakdown most of the time so let's take a look at age so if you take a look at this it seems that yeah, it's quite fascinating when you take a look at the data here and uh, it seems that majority of the signups are from the age groups of 35 to 44 followed by 25 to 34 years old and then by 45 to 54 and then 55 to 64. So it's really, really interesting when you take a look at all that and if you want to take a look by uh, gender as well. So we see that male has like 94 followed by female and uncategorized for some reason there's just like one over here so you might get that kind of thing occasionally all right uh, you can also take a look by uh, country if you're targeting multiple countries in this case this particular campaign was running to uh, only three simple countries singapore malaysia and canada so it's quite straightforward but if you're kind of curious to know about the region so region could mean uh, state or county depending on uh, the, con uh, the country that you're in right now like japan they go by prefecture so if you take a look at Singapore, Singapore is just a single island, so there's only so much you can break down, okay? But when you take a look at Malaysia, it's got, of course, multiple states, and you can see that the breakdown here, Selangor has the most signups, followed by Kuala Lumpur, which shouldn't be a surprise because these are the two most populated uh, states in the country, all right? And this would also be the same for other countries, like, you know, Canada, uh, this particular campaign ran only for a short while, uh, we've got three from British Columbia, two from Ontario, and so on. All right. Of course, with a much more mature campaign, you will get more data. But I just want to show you how you can actually take a look at a breakdown. And let's take a look at platform as well. Okay. So if you don't know whether your leads are coming from Facebook or Instagram, this is the place to look at. So if you want to have a look at the overarching view for this particular campaign, it seems that we have 105 leads that came from Facebook and 10 from Instagram, which is quite cool. Now, this really depends on the nature of your niche. In some markets or some products, do not be surprised if you get more actions from Instagram than you do from Facebook. Ultimately, they're all owned by the same company anyway. And uh, if you want to take a look at breakdown, delivery, and also have a look at the device, all right? So let's take a look at impression device. You can see that uh, a lot of the leads are coming from Android smartphone, all right? Android smartphone, uh, and we have a distant second, which is like half of the results, like iPhone. And if you take a look at desktop, it's really interesting. Like desktop has only like six leads. And I think this goes to show that this is the rise of mobile marketing. Most people are viewing and surfing websites from their phone nowadays, and they take action from their phone. So it does make sense that you want to make your landing page or sales page as mobile optimized as possible so that means you want to reduce loading time uh, image file sizes your hosting speed and things like that okay and uh, i think another thing we can take a look at is uh, time of the day now this is really up to you whether it's add account time zone or viewers time zone normally if you're viewing for the same time zone that's okay but maybe we take a look at uh, time of the day according to the viewers time zone assuming you are targeting multiple countries 
and it, this is kind of good indicator of like when are your uh, target market usually active in the day. So you can see here that the numbers are quite spread out a little bit, but you can see that this is rather uh, consistent throughout the 24 hours, except for like 4 to 6 a.m. You don't really have like any signups at all, but it goes to show when are people usually actively uh, taking action on your offer in the 24 hours. So you can see that this is all like eye-opening views. It, it can help you strategize when you're going to put in more budget as well. And if you think this only goes by the day, you can also take a look at the, uh, I would say, the day as well, all right? On, on which particular day um, that they are taking more actions, okay? So maybe just go for buy the day here and see what happens. Okay, there we go. So I right, rather to be exact, this is my by the date. All right. So, anyways, uh, if you want to clear all this breakdown, it might look a bit confusing initially. So you can go back to breakdown, select none, and we'll select none for this one as well. And we are back to this. If you're watching this video right now, you're probably determined to take your Facebook advertising to the next level. And watch this video only if you have already started running Facebook ads, you're spending some money, or at the very least, you're running your campaign for the last few days. Because what's going to happen next is that I'm going to share with you some of the things that you can do to take your Facebook ads and optimize it to what I just call it the next level again. All right. So this is something that you're going to discover very soon that how you scale your Facebook advertising campaign is somewhat different than when you're just starting out. Because when you're spending a small budget like five, 10, 20, or even uh, 50 to $100 a day, that is still considered a small daily budget. But when you're spending amounts like hundreds and thousands of dollars in a single day, you're gonna find that results do not scale very linearly. And the reason why that happens is because as you scale on Facebook advertising, you find that your profit margins get tend to get thinner. You're trying to reach your advertisement to serve it to a lot more people. And with that said, of course, if you're getting like a two to four times return on ad spend, sometimes you might even get a five to 10 times return on ad spend, depending on how deep the funnel is. But as you start spending more money, you realize that it's just not going to scale in a very linear manner. So what's going to happen in this video training is that I want to prepare you mentally on how to troubleshoot, how to optimize your advertisements and your targeting as you run Facebook ads. Okay. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about scaling. All right. If your ad is converting, it is time to scale. But with that said, scale cautiously. And I'm probably not the first marketer to tell you this. Let's say, for example, you're spending about a hundred dollars a day as an example. Okay. And Let's just say you're getting a four times return on ad spend. And that's fantastic because if you're spending $100 and you're getting $400 in return, what is really stopping you from throwing like your life savings and making this work? But again, as I've cautioned you just now, it doesn't quite work that way. So when you're scaling your winning ad set, what you want to do is you want to do it gradually. So you want to increase your daily ad spend like by 20 to 30% of ad spend increase and you don't do it any more than that okay why is that the case that's because if you're spending a hundred dollars a day you probably want to just edit the budget and change it to like 120 or 130 dollars a day that's probably what you're going to do okay and if you're thinking about all right but i'm actually ready to spend more money than that i'm ready to spend you know like a few hundred dollars in a single day so what you want to do is that you can make a duplicate of that winning ad set and duplicate it like three or four times. So for example, if you have a hundred dollar per day ad set that's doing very well and you intend to spend three hundred dollars a day, so instead of just editing that campaign or that ad set and change it to three hundred dollars a day, what you want to do is you want to duplicate that ad set three times, or oh, sorry, another two more times and at a hundred dollars each. Because what's happening here is that you'll find that Facebook will optimize the ads a lot better than if you try to chuck everything into a single ad set. Now, don't ask me, I'm not the one who made Facebook, okay? But we just find that this seems to work. And just be ready that as you scale, profit margin gets thinner. So don't plunk your money in drastically, okay? So when you're spending like three to four hundred dollars a day, as an example, you're not gonna get a four times return most of the time, all right? You might end up with like two times return uh, or even like 1.5 times. And I'm just making this up, by the way. And uh, you might do better than that, possibly because of your funnel. I just wanna say that 
it's quite normal to get a high return on ad spend when you're spending very little. And as you scale, your advertisement gets served to more or less targeted people. And of course, there's a human dynamics as well. Some people may not warm up to your advertisement initially. They might take some time to uh, get used to it or something may have changed or they might make a buying decision afterwards, all right? So I just want to let you know that as you scale, it's not going to be linear. And But what's more important is that as long as you are profitable, you're making more money than you spend, that's all that matters, okay? Now, what happens if the advertisements that you're running is not performing or your hunch is telling you that you could be doing better, okay? So this is where I always say, always be testing. Always try different message angles, test different images, test different videos. Now, I know some people tend to get lazy when it comes to testing things out. They might get lucky on a beginner's luck. They put out one or two advertisements, it seems to hit a home run, and then they stop running uh, or coming up with new advertisements after this. And to me, this is a really huge mistake and a wasted opportunity because sometimes you might get lucky with a beginner's luck. Uh, some people might resonate and jive with your message initially, but after a while, there might be user fatigue. People might just get bored of the same message again and again and again. So this is where you want to come up with fresh messages that resonates with people. Uh, try different images, try different videos, whether it's short, whether it's long. Um, for example, if you're doing a make money uh, or, or internet business niche, what are the pain points that people tend to resonate with? Are they fed up with their jobs? Are they uh, sick and tired of stuck in a traditional business? Are they uh, fed up with competitors? Are they struggling with rising costs, all right? So what I just named to you is just some of the different message angles that you could be attacking, all right? Uh, let's talk about losing weight, all right? Some people don't just do it for the sake of losing weight. Some people do it for self-esteem reasons. Some people are doing it for sex, all right? And uh, these are things that people really jive in. But of course, don't use the word sex in your ad, by the way, all right? And uh, I'm talking about some sensitive markets. You want to be careful with your choice of words. Uh, this is something that I talk about in my other parts of my training videos. I just want to say that at the end of the day, there are different motivational triggers for different types of people. And it's your job to keep testing different advertisements, different messages that would resonate with the people. Because you can be selling the same product, but you could be marketing to different types of people, all right? Number three, okay, in your ad set, you will notice that a lot of people tend to use automatic placements where they let Facebook decide where to distribute their budget into various platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and Audience Network. But if I could just give you a little tip here, I would prefer that you skip Audience Network. And what is Audience Network? If you're not aware of what it is, it's basically the advertisements that got served up on newspaper or news websites like CNN, Fox News, and many more. These are like partner sites that have agreed to run ads on uh, behalf of Facebook, okay? Now, in my experience, I find that even though Facebook allocates a very small budget daily to audience network, it's just not that effective. The state of the people that are watching these advertisements from news sites are usually negative. So, and I also notice on another thing is that uh, spam bots tend to come in from audience network as well. So instead of spending like 10-20% of your daily budget into audience network as distributed by Facebook, it is better that you just uncheck or untick the audience network and allocate that into the rest like Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger. So this is just a slight optimization to help you get the better leads or better cost per result. And yes, so you're kind of wondering what, what native ads look like when you visit news websites like this. This is where they show your advertisements on. And if you notice, a lot of news websites tend to attract a lot of negative people and rightfully so because they always run negative advertisements. Imagine that your offer shows up on uh, news websites where people are already like in a negative state of mind, okay? So don't want to do that. Now, tip number four, try out long post, all right? So this might sound counterintuitive because a lot of people that uh, try running Facebook ads for the first time, they might intuitively think that running a short based ad is a lot better because of people's short attention span. We find that writing long posts actually helps get in more targeted audience because why would that be the case? Number one, let's talk about a Facebook algorithm or learning machine. 
the more you write into your post, of course, within reasonable limits, the more that you write, it actually helps tell Facebook a learning machine that, look, this is the kind of audience that I want to hook in, all right? It helps you find a more targeted audience. And we also find that people that bother to read a long post are also more likely to be qualified and interested. Now, if you want to be a little bit more objective about it, I recommend that you put 2,200 characters or under so that it is can appear on both Facebook platform and Instagram ads as well. But there's no true limit for Facebook ads. So even if you write longer than this, that's actually fine. But the only drawback is that this will not appear on Instagram, okay? And for any detractors that think that, oh, people will not want to read a long post, and you might have heard of the famous nine second attention go span, uh, go fish, uh, attention span here. Now, I just want to say that people are not goldfishers, okay? Now, the truth of the matter is, yes, it's true that we are fighting for the most precious commodity right now, and that is attention span. But I want you to know that people are not goldfishers because you can write a short advertisement, but if they're just not interested in it, you can put two, three lines or a short paragraph, and they will still not click on it and take action. Now, on the other hand, if your advertisement jives okay and it resonates with the people that is intended for you can be writing a short or long essay people will still click on it okay tip number five so while we're on the topic of long posts you can also try long videos now most advertisers for starters will try doing videos that are below two minutes and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but again falling back on my point earlier that you want to split test as many uh, creatives as possible you want to have one short video below two minutes and you want to have one long video uh, that offers more education more awareness building uh, awareness building in your video and this will help you reel in more qualified leads and how long should a video be to be very frank uh, there's no true uh, length to a video there's some that can run for like three to five minutes and I think that's a good good length to look at you can even run for five to ten minutes and I've seen videos that run for two to three hours. There are actually people that upload their entire webinar replay onto a Facebook ad video, okay? And if you're wondering, do people actually watch all the way? That's not true as well. But here's the thing. I've gotten results, I've gotten purchases, I've gotten leads that sign up, and when I look at it, they didn't watch the video all the way, but they did get the idea, all right? It's just like people that read the entire newspaper, they didn't read word for word, but they just, browse through the headline and the sub headlines, they read some parts here and there, they get the idea and they decided that they want in. And if you review all of your past buying purchases as well, I probably bet you don't actually read every single word that you did or watch the entire video that you've seen, okay? That, that hardly ever happens. And yet you make buying decisions, you make decisions to sign up for uh, webinars, uh, uh, seminars or, or opt-ins, uh, free offers and, and anything like that, okay? And uh, number six, uh, avoid using you and your too often your ad copy because this is going to sound counterintuitive especially to direct response marketers they will struggle with this normally okay old school direct response marketers normally struggle with this but you have to understand that when it comes to social media it's kind of like a networking uh, a social platform that's exactly what it is okay so you don't want to be adopting a me to you communication you have to treat it like you're in a party so when you write you want to be indirect or speak in a very third party manner. So I'm going to give you some typical bad examples that people will write very directly like, are you fat? Okay, so you don't want to be starting off like that or are you facing this problem? You don't want to start off like that. Do you want to find a girlfriend? Clearly not, okay? And even attention real estate agents, to an extent, I do not encourage this way of uh, doing this because what you're doing is that you're already excluding people and alienating a uh, cold audience right off the bat and this actually indirectly contributes to a bad Facebook ad score overall okay can you imagine that on a more sensitive level you put something along the lines like uh, are you a Christian or attention Muslim people uh, this is obviously going to be uh, kind of like sensitive altogether so you want to avoid that kind of language so even if your ideal audience are Christians or, or, or people of a certain religious beliefs or a certain niche of people, so what you want to do is you want to word it in an indirect way. Like we have helped hundreds of people lose weight or we have helped hundreds of people transform their body and regain their health since the year 2006. Here's how to in increase attractiveness without riches or good looks. Or in the last five years, I have successfully bought and sold doses of properties in LA and here's how I've done it, okay? So I think you get the idea. You want to basically rephrase everything from uh, a me to you communication, first person, to third party, okay? Tip number seven, use original quality photos. We find that 
In our experiment, we find that original photos tend to uh, convert better than stock photos. But this doesn't mean that you don't uh, try stock photos at all. Again, you want to split test as many uh, creatives as possible. But of course, uh, stock photos might do well, but original photos in our experience tend to do better as well. And you don't really need to work that hard to get original photos, okay? Uh, you can even use a DSLR or even nowadays any dual camera like iPhone 6 Plus and above would pretty much make the cut. Or even Huawei P20, P30, okay? Now, I'm not going to put a full list of uh, phone cameras here because uh, phones are something that evolve very quickly. It, it can get obsolete like in the next 6 or 12 months for that matter. But I just want to say that any uh, dual camera uh, phones is pretty much good enough. Or you have DSLR then more power to you, okay? Tip number six, use eye-catching thumbnails. So even if you're running video ads, you want to mask it with a thumbnail like this that you're seeing here right now. This is one of a very uh, high-performing ad. And if you're not sure how to create thumbnails, you can pretty much just use Photoshop. Or if you don't know how to use Photoshop, you can just go to canva.com. You can open an account for free. And it's very intuitive that I don't even need to show you how to use it here, all right? You can basically use it as an absolute beginner. Uh, get on canva.com, it's free to open, and start creating uh, images for your video thumbnail, all right? So if you look at all the uh, high-performing advertisements that are video-based, they rarely ever use uh, a default video picture or a screenshot from the video itself. They always mask it with a thumbnail that you can pretty much edit. But might I remind you, you don't want to put in too much text, you want to make it below 20% of the overall coverage, okay? And I find that a 1200 times 628 pixels dimension or 16 by 9 wide is the best uh, dimension, all right? And uh, last but not least, as you start building your leads, when you start getting more customers and you hit at least 100 email addresses or 100 uh, phone numbers, what you can do is you can start creating a look-alike audience. So to put it in short, a look-alike audience is a powerful feature by Facebook where you're basically uploading a list of names and you're telling Facebook that you want to find more customers very similar to the list that you have given, all right? And for this to work better, you need to put in a list of a minimum of 100 email addresses and or phone numbers, but email addresses will be more preferred, okay? And of course, the more you have, the better. So if you have like a few hundred or, or, or thousands for the matter, that's gonna be even better. And you can tell Facebook, I wanna find more customers like this. So the way it works is that Facebook works on a percentage basis between 1% to 10%, 1% being the closest percentile towards your uh, choice of audience, 10% being the furthest, okay? Now, this is explained in another video training where I show how this is done step by step, but what I want you to know is that as you start getting more uh, leads, more customers, and you hit a minimum of 100 names, email addresses, and or phone numbers, you can start leveraging on lookalike audience, and this is where the fun begins. Now, I know that for some types of businesses, hitting 100 email addresses might seem like a little bit of work at a moment, and that's okay. Uh, until then, you can always use detailed interest and broad targeting, which is getting better and better nowadays as well, all right? So there you have it. These are just some of the nine methods that you can use to optimize your Facebook advertising and your uh, scaling for that matter. And here's to your marketing success. Last but not least, be patient, okay? You've got this.